So the last category in this section is herbs that invigorate the blood. So these are herbs that treat blood stagnation. And I should apologize in advance, I have a tendency to say blood stagnation instead of blood stasis. Technically, these are two different characters in Chinese. When the qi is not moving, we say qi zhi, qi stagnation. And when the blood is not moving, or it's moving sluggishly, we say shui yu, blood stasis. But really, these two things mean the same thing. It's like saying Merry Christmas versus Happy New Year. What's the difference between merry and happy? They kind of mean the same thing, we just idiomatically attach them to different terms. So hopefully you don't get too confused if I occasionally say blood stagnation, I really mean blood stasis. So blood stasis is the inhibited movement or non-movement of blood through the vessels. This can have several causes. Cold, heat, qi stagnation, qi deficiency, or injury and trauma. But the main things we're treating here are pain conditions, because where there's stagnation, there's pain, and menstruation issues, like painful menses, amenorrhea, or abnormal uterine bleeding. Or we might also see things like lumps, accumulations, or abdominal masses due to blood stagnation, or blood stasis. When we look at the properties, these herbs are usually warm in temperature because warm is moving, but some are cold, so that's something we'll want to pay attention to. Most are acrid because the acrid flavor moves and disperses, and they all enter the liver channel because the liver stores blood, and some of them enter the heart channel because the heart governs blood or moves blood. And because they promote movement, Many of these herbs are contraindicated during pregnancy. It kind of depends on how strongly they move blood. The herbs that gently move blood are okay to use, but the herbs that strongly move blood or break the blood are definitely contraindicated. So this is another long category. It turns out that Wiseman and Brand will actually group them based on herbs that relieve pain, herbs that regulate menses, herbs that break up masses, and herbs for injury and trauma. For this one, just to keep it simple, I'm going to go in Bensky order, but keep in mind that some of these herbs have this specialty. So let's start with the first one, which is Chuan Xiong. Chuan Xiong moves both qi and blood, and it's good for pain. One of its specialties is that it relieves headache. This can be any type of headache due to any cause, depending on what it's combined with. So when you get into formula class and talk about formula modifications, Pretty much all of the formulas are going to have this modif modification. For headaches, add Chuan Chong. So know that Chuan Chong treats headache, but it's also very commonly used for a variety of blood stagnation conditions. Chu Shao is red peony. We should know that it both invigorates blood and cools the blood. Remember we had another herb like this, Mudan Pi. So Mudan Pi is in the cool the blood category, but it also invigorates blood. And here Chu Shao is in the invigorate blood category, but it also cools the blood. Dan Chen is also cool in temperature. And for this one, I would think about the chest and the heart. I mean, Danshen is also used for gynecological issues, but it's one of our best herbs for treating chest pain and heart pain due to stagnation. It also clears heat to calm Shen, so Danshen calms the Shen. Dan means cinnabar, same as like Dan Tian, so Danshen means uh, so Danshen means cinnabar root, referring to the color. Juishe. <laughs> Ji Shui Tong invigorates blood and sorry, Ji Shui Tong invigorates blood, tonifies blood, and unblocks the channels and relaxes the sinews. These things make it especially useful for wind in the channels or B syndrome. Tongue means vine, so you can think that vines are soft and flexible, so that's why vines tend to be used to treat B syndrome. The name means chicken blood vine, which again is referring to the color. Yan Hu Suo, move qi and blood to stop pain. It can be used to treat pain from a variety of causes anywhere in the body, depending on the combination. I believe Yan Hu Suo is in the poppy family, which is the same family that the opium plant is in. Now, 
this is not the same as opium. It's not as strong in its action, and it doesn't have that habit-forming addiction thing, but that's just a way I like to remember that Yan Hu Suo stops pain.